Being stuck is awful. Simply put, losing the freedom to remove yourself from wherever you are can be absolutely terrifying. From the heights of an electric pylon to the bottom of the ocean, here are some of the scariest places that people have actually been stuck in real life. Being stuck in an elevator might not sound terribly scary, but that's because we're trained to think we'll be rescued in a relatively short time. But what if you're stuck in an elevator for nearly two days with no indication that anyone knew you were there? That's exactly what happened to a man named Nicholas White in New York City in 1999. White was working on the 43rd floor of the McGraw-Hill building when he got on the elevator to have a cigarette break. When he came back, he got in an express elevator that made no stops between the lobby and the 39th floor. Somewhere around the 13th floor, the elevator just stopped. He had no water or food, just his cigarettes and a pack of Rolades. He spent the next 41 hours pacing, trying to sleep, opening and closing the elevator doors, and experiencing hallucinations. White was eventually rescued, but his life would never be the same. He refused to go back to work and eventually lost his job. He did file a lawsuit and received a settlement, but it was likely not a significant amount, though he isn't allowed to disclose the exact figure. Most people are smart enough to generally avoid dangerous heights and high-voltage electricity since those things are well known to lead directly to death. But in 2017, in Hutton, Lancashire, England, one 36-year-old man somehow combined both into an extremely exciting moment. As reported by The Telegraph, he was spotted entangled in a 275 kilovolt line about 65 feet off the ground. Nobody knows how the man got up there or how he got stuck in the first place, but we do know that he's incredibly lucky. Once he was spotted, rescue crews raced to the scene, and the local utility company cut the power to that particular line, removing the possibility that he'd be electrocuted. This also made it safe for the small army of police and emergency responders to climb up and help him. The man was secured and freed from the wire and then taken to a local hospital for treatments where he was described as alive but incapacitated. Despite all the trouble he caused, no charges were brought against him. It's particularly cruel when you get stuck in something that normally represents freedom, which Michigan resident Ben Carpenter found out the hard way in 2007. Carpenter, who has muscular dystrophy, uses a motorized wheelchair to get around. He traveled to the town of Pawpaw to ride on a trail with a medical aid. The aide fell behind on a bicycle, and when Carpenter tried to cross a busy intersection, he was a little too slow to beat the light. He was also too low to be seen by a truck driver who hit the gas, bumping Carpenter's wheelchair and spinning it. The handles of Carpenter's wheelchair got jammed into the grill of the truck, which then proceeded onto the highway. The truck driver was unaware of the presence of Carpenter, who was now stuck on the front of a speeding truck. Incredibly, Carpenter was saved from serious injury because he was already strapped into the wheelchair. The truck pushed him approximately four miles, hitting the top speed of about 50 miles per hour. Other motorists on the road saw what was happening and began calling 911. Miraculously, when the police finally stopped the truck, Carpenter was completely unharmed. We, we definitely laugh about it yeah. and feel very fortunate that Ben wasn't hurt. It's amazing I survived. Nobody shows up for work each day expecting to become trapped inside an enormous receptacle, but that's exactly what happened to a California man in 2018. An employee of U.S. Pipe and Foundry, the 23-year-old man had recently been promoted to a supervisor position when he fell inside a large cement hopper which allows cement to be stored and dispensed as needed. The man was cleaning the hopper when he fell inside. His legs immediately began to sink into the cement, which also began hardening around him, making it increasingly difficult for him to move. His co-workers tried to rescue him, but all their attempts failed. They eventually called for help. Firefighters arrived, but they were also unable to free the man. They lowered a harness to stop him from sinking any further and provided water and oxygen to him. Eventually, a technical rescue team arrived, and a little over two hours after his fall, he was finally extracted from the hopper. Thankfully, he suffered only minor injuries. And the man tonight said to be uh, doing well and should be returning home with his family anytime this evening. Plenty of people have locked themselves out of their homes at some point in their lives, but one particular man in Arizona chose a terrible way to deal with the situation. The 26-year-old Tucson resident forgot his keys inside his house and then attempted to break in by climbing down the chimney. There are many reasons why this is a bad idea. First off, chimneys tend to be absolutely filthy, and they're a prime place to get stuck in, which is exactly what happened. Interestingly enough, the man made it almost all the way through, as his feet were actually touching the floor of his fireplace when he realized that the opening had narrowed too much and he couldn't move. He also couldn't reach for a phone or anything else, so he did the only thing he could, scream for help for the next four hours. Neighbors eventually heard him and called the fire department, who came and rescued him by lowering a rope into the chimney and pulling him back up. He emerged covered in soot, but without any injuries, except perhaps for his pride. 
On a list of most likely ways to die, trapped inside the leg of a dinosaur statue probably wouldn't be very high. But as one unfortunate man in Spain found out, the chances of this happening are not impossible. This man was reported missing by his family and then discovered in the leg of a paper mache stegosaurus statue in a suburb outside Barcelona. The statue was cut open by firefighters and the body was determined to have been there for several days. It's likely the man was trying to retrieve his phone, which had fallen into the statue. The true horrifying aspect of the story is the fact that this man was inside the statue for several days. The only reason authorities were even alerted to his presence was the smell, which prompted someone to peer inside the statue and catch a glimpse of the body. If you've ever seen the 2010 film 127 Hours, you surely can't forget the scene in which James Franco as Aaron Ralston cuts off his own arm in order to save his life. That's obviously a terrifying act of desperation. And all those other hours spent stuck in a desert canyon weren't exactly a cakewalk either. The real Aaron Walston was pinned by a falling rock in Utah's Blue John Canyon in 2003. He had some food and water, and he was an experienced hiker, so he didn't panic. But he hadn't told anyone where he was going, so there wasn't much hope of rescue. Over the course of the next six days, he tried everything he could think of to free himself from the rock. But alas, nothing worked. A weakening and somewhat delirious Ralston realized that if he was going to survive, he would have to cut off his own arm. This consisted of first breaking his own bones and then using a cheap blunt knife from a multi-tool to saw through the flesh. Ralston then walked five miles with his arm in a sling before encountering other people. Even after this incident, Ralston continued to climb mountains. When something happens, it's a trauma, but we decide whether it's going to be a tragedy or a, or a triumph. One of the most primal reasons we hate getting stuck in places is that deep down we know it's possible that we might not become unstuck. That's something a man named John Ogden learned in the most horrifying way possible. In 1967, Ogden and a group of friends entered the Mossdale Caverns in Yorkshire, England. This particular cave system is notably challenging. It's classed as super severe, and at one point you have to wriggle through a narrow passage for about 900 feet. You can walk for miles in the darkness and easily become lost. On that day, the cavers didn't get lost. Instead, they endured something much worse, a terrifying flood. The weather turned rough outside, with rain falling in torrents. The quiet stream outside the cave flooded and covered the entrance, and a torrent of water filled the caverns. When the cavers realized that a high-powered stream of water was rushing towards them, they ran. Just as the water hit, Ogden was able to push himself up into a crevice where a bubble of air kept him alive while his friends drowned beneath him. But alas, he was trapped. Days later, when the bodies were located, Ogden was still stuck there, but he was no longer alive. Chris Lemons works as a diver, repairing and maintaining underwater oil rig structures. While working in the North Sea in 2012, he was about 300 feet under the water. At that depth, divers have to use a special combination of oxygen and helium fed to them through an umbilical. They have an emergency tank of air, but at that pressure, it lasts only a few minutes. When the weather topside worsened, Lemons heard an alarm and was ordered to immediately retreat to the diving bell and prepare to come back to the surface. But before he could do so, his umbilical was severed, leaving him stranded at the literal bottom of the ocean in pitch black darkness with little hope of survival. He expected his emergency tank to last about five minutes, even if he sipped it and tried to breathe as shallowly as possible. At that point, once you've calmed and done the maths, you realize that your chances of of getting out of this are, are almost non-existent. Lemons made his way back to the structure he'd been repairing and lay down, certain that he was about to die. But incredibly, his crewmates worked feverishly and managed to pull him back up after 35 minutes and revive him almost immediately. Even more incredibly, he suffered no lingering effects and completely recovered. Parents spend a lot of time and energy worrying about their kids, but generally relax a little when hanging out with the grandparents. After all, there's theoretically much more supervision in that scenario. But for the Strubing family of Tennessee, that didn't work out too well. In 2021, their two-year-old son Dorian was amusing himself around his grandparents' house when he managed to squeeze himself into an antique barrel. He then learned the fundamental lesson of getting stuck in things. It's always easier to get in something than it is to get out. Dorian was able to squat down in the barrel, but then realized that he couldn't straighten his legs because they were pinned. He reportedly remained very calm while his family tried everything they could think of to get him out. They panicked when it seemed impossible, and they were also terrified that they would hurt Dorian if they tried to cut or smash the barrel, so they decided to go to the emergency room. Doctors x-rayed the barrel to see where Dorian's legs and feet were, and then called in the fire department. At first, they tried to use the hydraulic shears known as the Jaws of Life to free the boy, but when that failed, they had to resort to a power saw, a hammer, and a screwdriver to remove the bottom of the barrel. 
Dorian was ultimately freed without a scratch. There's a happy ending to his story, as he received a popsicle for being a very brave boy during the ordeal. But to all you kids out there, keep in mind that there are much easier ways to get yourself a frozen treat. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.